previously on Starting Over, Sine admitted her parents didn't agree with her relationship. Why not? It's race. Is he African American? Yes, he is. Have you seen him since you've been diagnosed? Does he even know? Mm -hmm. He doesn't care. He loves me anyways. Kim opened up about her problems with women. I don't have good relationships with women. My mom is, she's the only person I go to for support. When she dies, um, I won't have anybody. She also shared the pain surrounding her relationship with her father. My father left when I was six. My father had a whole separate family, which did not include me. Josie met with a career counselor. I went to work towards my pre-vet. I love animals. Who opened up a new door for her. It just blows my mind to think that you could have a career in something that you really love to do. Meanwhile, Deborah was caught in a big lie. So you haven't had sex in six years. Right. I want to show you something. I want you to explain it to me because I'm a little confused. Kind of broken. Now this is this. I want to get this taken care of. Could you be pregnant? Have you lost respect for me because I'm nothing but a liar? I want to know that I can trust you from now on. And even though the life coaches allowed her to stay, Deborah felt she had no choice and moved out. Did she actually leave? I think she's really gone. Ladies. Hello. How are you living? Good. <laughs> so today I've asked Yanla to join us so that we can discuss your sixth roommate leaving Deborah. And the first question we have for you really is, why do you think she left? Well, what was so weird with us is we went out the night before. We had a blast. Go from B! It was like she was opening up laughing. <laughs> <laughs> we had yeah, a, blast. Was a blast. We all had a blast. Yeah. And how did you feel when now that she's left? Puzzled. And honestly, I thought it was like the little boy who cried wolf. I thought she was doing it again so just to I. say it. Because so she's packed her bags, what, four times yes. already? So here you are. You have the perception mm -hmm. or the experience that someone has really opened up to you. And the next thing you know, they're gone. Yeah. What does that remind you of? My father. Mm -hmm. Father. Same. Yep. So what I want to offer you is don't take this on mm -hmm. as an abandonment. Bring it to this right now moment and say she made another choice. She's not coming back, though. Deborah's not coming back. Kim, I want to assure you, Deborah is not coming back into the starting over Thank house. You. You were her roommate. Well, I thought maybe I was thinking it's my fault. Well, yeah, of course, that's the But I don't know that I did anything wrong. Did you do anything wrong? No. So then don't take that on. I really tried with her as hard as I could. One of the reasons she left is Deborah was not necessarily forthright in some of the things that she shared. And I think that's one of the reasons she chose to go. But personally for me, I'm really sad that she went. Because when a woman leaves a starting over house, it's a loss for all of us because we don't get to heal those parts of ourselves that she brings up and we don't get to face our fears about that type of person and we don't get to process all the things that this particular person gifted to us by her presence so whenever a woman in the starting over house leaves it's very sad we have to learn how to love support see people that perhaps we have judgments against that seem difficult to us. You can't go through life and not face those people and stay true to yourself. I think that all of us test other people in order to see if we're worth loving. You know, I, I have a you know, secret philosophy that I believe our marriages or our closest intimate relationships, those are where we act out the most because I think all of us need to have somebody witness our acting out and not react. And just go, okay, you did that, you betrayed me? All right, well, I still love you. Yeah, you pissed me off and I'm hurt, but I still love you. Kim, you got some tears going on? What's, it, what's going on? Well, just that's exactly how I feel. It'd be nice if somebody would just love me for me and not have to work so hard at all this other stuff. And first, if Instead of being good and bad. Yeah. Every single one of us wants to be seen for who we really are and loved 
warts and all for who we are, but yet most of us are so afraid to show anyone who that is. And how can anybody love you if they don't see you? Because you're so busy just showing the good. I'm afraid if I am myself, then I'll be judged for being bad. I know. I believe this from the bottom of my toes. There is nothing wrong with you. You've just been hurt and afraid. And I'm gonna tell every one of you this secret. There is nothing wrong with you. There's nothing to fix, nothing to mend, just something to discover, something to stand up for, something to love. Have a great day, ladies. critical juncture in her quest to become independent. She has an unresolved relationship with her ex-boyfriend, Matt, and she's got to decide on her own whether it really makes her feel better about herself, whether it really is love. So what do you think about, I know that you've told me before that your mom and dad really aren't for your relationship with Matt. Is that mm. still true? Uh, my mom said I should really think about um, being in something long-term. You have enough trust in yourself to go forward in the relationship with Matt, if that's the way it goes, mm -hmm. regardless of your parents liking him or not. Yep. His parents look at me like I would like my parents to look at him. Mm -hmm. They love me. If my parents don't love my boyfriend, then oh well. So you ready for another test? Mm -hmm. Sure. I want to meet Matt. Mm -hmm. I want you to call him up. Mm -hmm. and invite him for next weekend. Next weekend? Yeah. All right. I'm really excited for you. <laughs> Hello? Is Matt there? Matt? Mm-hmm. No, he isn't. Okay. He's at work. Okay, thank you. So... I guess, since we don't know each other, mm -hmm. we met only in the group, really, mm -hmm. um, I'd like to get to know you a little bit. Can you give me the short version, like the paragraph? I'm a single child. I was raised by my grandparents. My mother and my father were hippies and wanted to do their own thing. So I'm a product, I'm a love child, pretty much. Where, and was, your, where was your mother? Where was bartending. She, she, never, she, never, she never really took care of you. No. Have you been very emotional about these things? I can still cry about some of it. To think really hard about, like, the last time I remember my mom and my dad together. How old were you? I was five. And you have distinct memories of that? That's how I know my dad beat my mom. Is that the last memories? Yep. Can Is my me, dad can you tell you about that? hurting my mom? Um, my dad and my mom were at the bar, and my dad was drunk, and so was my mom, and she was bartending. My mom threw him out of her bar. So my mom came to the house, because I was at the house by myself. Five years old. By yourself? Yeah, because we lived behind the bar. How convenient. You can just walk out your front door and get pissed drunk. So my dad comes home, and my mom has somebody watch the bar for her, and she's there, and I watch um, pretty much my dad and my mom fight, and my dad beat her up. And you couldn't do anything, could you? No, I tried. I got pushed down. But you were only five. I know. And then um, my mom told me to run away. So I'm standing outside, five years old, and I run with my dog, who was like my only friend I had. The dog was the same age as me. And it's so funny, but I miss that dog so much because that was like my best friend, and he protected me from my dad. You're five years old, you walk in, you can't save your mom, you can't stop your dad, and no one's taking care of you but your dog. Mm -hmm. So now you're a mother. Can you imagine? Chloe, in four years, walking in on that scene? And this really is about your self-awareness. Feels like criticism to me. Then I feel broken. Broken and bad and wrong and unworthy. And I won't take from her and I won't ever make her feel like it's her fault. I will protect her. I will fight for her. My grandma fought for me, and I will fight for her. It's forever. It's life. How much do you beat yourself up for, for being in the situation you're in, 
in the sense that you're not married to Chloe's father. She's going to have to maybe go back and forth at some point. You know, are you critical of that, or do you beat yeah, yourself up? I do. I'm 21 years old, and I'm not married, and I got pregnant. Okay. I didn't finish school. I'm not financially prepared to take care of her. I didn't plan ahead, and I don't like that. But look at what you just said. You're going to be there for her. You're going to be her anchor, right? It kind of balances out where I've screwed up so bad. Okay. Because I'll make sure that I don't do the things that have happened to me. As a single parent, Josie needs to focus her attention on taking care of Chloe. But in order to do so, she also needs to find a career that's fulfilling for her. weekend if it's possible so if you can call me back and let me know what he thinks about that okay I'll let him know. thank you all right bye 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 cute cute jennifer hello oh. how you living <laughs> good <laughs> how you living miss jennifer with your wonderful illustrious jewelry iana is making me wear this necklace that i made yesterday on the necklace are things that I had written on my bricks from my activity the other day. I'm really hoping that she's not going to make me wear this necklace until all of these have been pulled off. Miss Jennifer, what's on your heart besides pink and green and yellow issues? I'm not too happy about wearing it. Why? Because I don't want to wear it. That's your stuff. I know, I just don't want to wear it. But you wear it every day in everything that you do. I, un I know. I understand. I just don't want to wear it. So how would you choose to deal with all of those wonderful mental bricks? Tuck them away in the drawer? Mm hmm Miss Jennifer, why are you so resistant to change? Because I'm scared. Of? Not knowing who I really am. If I put down all this stuff, I don't... I don't know who I am without all of this. Ah, what a powerful awareness. Without the stuff, the story, the, the issues, the without that, we don't know who we are. Mm -hmm. So we idolize the problem. Today, Kim, we want to talk to you about some relationship stuff. How many broken relationships do you have? <laughs> a church. You have a broken relationship with a church. My sister. Your sister. Uh, three friends. Three friends. My, my stepmother. Yes. My father. My stepkids, so that's four. Okay, so we've right got around there. ten broken relationships. What is it that you do that causes your relationships to fall apart? Well, I think it's possible I do something that I'm not self-aware enough about that must be pushing people away. Because I do know that the common denominator is me. Mm -hmm. I have figured that out. Okay, good for you. Which is the best, most, the strongest, most profound relationship in your life right now? My mother. Is there a relationship in your life right now that's yeah, okay, but shaky? Probably my father. Do you want to mend the relationship? Yes. So could it just be about hearing his side? Don't make any judgment, choice, decision about it. Just hear his side and take it in. Would you be willing to do that? Yes. Okay, now where's a busted relationship where you can still reach out to the person? Where I still You've got can. 10. You've got 10. Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> And this really is about your self-awareness. Okay. Because the greatest gift anyone gives us is feedback about how they see us. I guess it feels okay. like criticism to me. And if people criticize you? Then I feel broken, I guess. Just broken and bad and wrong and unworthy. So when your feelings get hurt, 
you go to the I'm bad, I'm wrong, I'm unworthy. How about just nurture yourself? Huh. How about just nurture <laughs> yourself? I guess I don't know how to do that. Would you be willing to learn? Yes. If Kim really wants to know the truth about herself, all she needs to do is look at her relationships. So your mom is good, solid, dad is eh, eh. You're gonna call these people, and these are some of the questions you wanna know. What's the most hurtful thing I've done to you? You're just gonna take it in, because without the feedback, Kim, you won't be able to change. You're gonna ask them, what are the two to three qualities you really love about me? And then what are the two to three qualities I really need to work on? As you ask the questions, no comment, no explanation. Just thank you. You cannot speak back to what they say. Okay, and you're to make those calls today. And then you and I will get together later on and talk about what came forward. Is that good? Hello? Mom. Yeah. How are you? Good. I am doing an exercise on okay. self-awareness. So I need to ask you a few questions. Okay. So what is the nicest thing I've done for you? I think sharing your children with me is probably the one I love the most. What are the two or three qualities you love about me? I love to see you walk in the door and the way you look. <laughs> you're colorful. I like the way you look and dress. And your hospitality. Hospitality. Hey, Josie. Josie needs to get out of the world and seek fulfillment and financial independence. So, because of her love for animals, I thought maybe being an animal trainer would be a perfect fit. I know that in junior college, you were pre-vet, you wanted to be a veterinarian. Uh-huh. And I know we talked the other day, you and the career counselor... Nelly, go back. I know you and the career counselor talked about entertainment. Uh -huh. And so Brian trains animals for TV, movies, commercials. And so I'm combining two loves to see maybe if this is something you'd like to do. What do you think? This is too cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to basically hand you over to Brian, and you're going to go to work for a couple hours and learn all about it. OK, so anyway, this is Nelly. And uh, what are you going to be doing? Starting off the day, getting to know her a little bit. Nelly, go back. Nelly, back. Back, back. Just hold your hand out flat like that. OK. She's going to take the apples off your hand. It's like a vacuum cleaner. Okay. She's very gentle, she's very sweet, she likes people. She likes apples better than people, but she likes people for sure. Just follow me. We'll leave Nelly a little snack here. And uh, we're gonna take off around the ranch and do a little tour. Hello. Hi, Dad. Hey. How are you? What are you thinking of you this morning? Well, listen. Dad, I have to do, or I am doing, a, like, a exercise on self-awareness. Uh-huh. So I need to ask you some questions. Okay. And I want you to answer as honestly as you possibly can. What is the nicest thing I've done for you? Well, uh, one thing sticks in my mind right away. Remember I was in Denver one time and you arranged for me to get on a golf club? Oh, yes. You bought me a nice golf shirt. What is the most hurtful thing I've done to you? Hmm. Yeah, that's going to be tough, but no. try to answer as honestly as you can. Uh, that you don't uh, send me a little gift uh, on my birthday or Christmas. Just a little thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Just a thought. Something more personal than uh, the card that you guys send out. Okay. Thank you. And... What are two to three qualities you think that I need to work on? You know, the thing uh, of uh, my leaving Denver and divorce, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm still concerned that that that's, uh, that you're carrying that, you know. Holding a grudge? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know holding a grudge, but yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Not, forgive, or yeah. For, not forgiving. Yeah. Okay. What do you think that I do that challenges our relationship? That, uh, that little wall that's there, you know? Mm-hmm. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. 
And what are two or three qualities that you love about me? Well, the first thing is uh, your personality. And hmm. the attention you pay to your daughters, my granddaughters. You know, you're always going to be. My little girl. <laughs> I need to ask some questions. Okay. What are the qualities that you love about me? You're always going to be my little girl. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And um, I will really, really take those into consideration. Okay. Okay? All right. All right. Love you, Dad. Yeah, love you, Thank too. Thank you. you. Have a great week. Okay. You too. Bye. I think that this is the first step in me really trying to mend my relationship with my father. He is trying and the fact that he said that to me uh, leads me to believe that he is at least willing to explore um, mending our relationship that was my dad okay and <sighs> when i asked him what are the two or three most qualities you love about me he burst out crying and he said you'll always be my little girl Oh, Kitty. And then all of a sudden the phone went silent and I didn't know if it went dead. He said, I remember when I was... Hmm. When I used to uh, take care of you before I left. Hmm. And feed you. I think that when they got divorced back in the 60s, it was embarrassing for all of us. So uh, it's been really hard for me to relate to him as an adult instead of still feeling like the six-year-old little girl. That was tough. But how does it make you feel now that you know that? I'm just sad that, you know, it, I think I'm just, it's true, I'm hold a grudge mm -hmm. and I'm mad that he did what he did and I lost out on it. Mm -hmm because you were holding a grudge for so long. I'm the same way, Kimmy. I'm the same exact way. Ah. Come on in. Are you nervous? No, not really, not actually. Good. How unusual. Most people would be terrified. My heart's not even part. racing, even. Now, you're going to okay. do this with Zulu. Just be careful she doesn't catch up. Come on, Zulu. Zulu, come on, baby. Come on, Zulu, stay ahead of her. Come on, Zulu. Come on, Zulu. Good girl. Come on, Zuli. The reason I love animals so much is because my German Shepherd, Ted, was always there for me. And Ted was like the only friend I ever had. He always would be there to protect me, and he never left my side. And what about you, Stinky? You was a good girl. <laughs> yes, you were. I think with lions, that's enough for the day. Bam's hot. It's hot today, Bam's. It's very hard. But what I'm going to show you is uh, this is what you can do with him today just to get introduced to him. You're going to put a marshmallow in your mouth like this. Okay. And you're going to take it out like this. Okay, so just put it in your mouth and lean over. Just lean all the way over. There you go. That's good. Now we're going to do one more. Up, up, in. I can't believe that I had marshmallows in my mouth and and I, I was feeding a bear from my mouth. Marshmallows. It's a good baby boy. He'll, yeah. he'll do anything for a marshmallow. Even if it is a marshmallow. marshmallow. Okay, so now we're going to head over and uh, that's... Good boy, Bam. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's head on over to uh, give Nelly a bath. Okay, so what we'll do first of all, take that shovel and try to pick up Nelly's poop. I can tell you now, the secret is it's all in the wrist. There you go, that's not bad for the first shot. Boy, you might be a pro at this. I feel at home with these animals. I mean, they're, they're like my best friends. Okay, very good. I think that's a good opening uh, beginning for your possible career. So what do you think? You still want to be an animal person? Oh yeah, it's too cool. Too cool. Hello? Hi, may I please speak with Matt? Uh, he's at work right now. Okay. I told him to call today, but he was in a real big hurry. I figured. And, okay, I'll tell him again. I probably won't see him for the morning. Okay, thank but you. But I'll, I'll tell him again, okay? Mm hmm All right, then. Take care, babe. Okay. Bye. 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 You want me to read him? No. Okay, so I will. <laughs> Okay, afraid to show love, fear of change, scared. First grade teacher hated me. Don't want to be an outsider. She told me to put anything. We'll just put a little bit more on her shoulders I since had she it like feels this. feels I, so stressed. Here's how I had it earlier when I was cleaning. There you go. Like a Karen on your back. Hey, there you go. What's happening? Justin. Make it work. Bye, guys. Yeah, she's going down in the dungeon with me. <laughs> Feels like. <laughs> Feels like the dungeon down here. So, have you heard from Matt? I called him twice. Okay. Yesterday, well, he was working late last night, and he worked graveyard, so he was sleeping when I called. I want to understand your relationship with Matt. Okay. And I also want to support you in preparing if he does come. Mm -hmm. So, do you know what was the eyes? What are those eyes? If he does come. Yeah. If he does. All the stuff come. that has to happen before he comes. Okay. What's all the stuff that has to happen? Oh God. I'm not physically ready for him to be here. What about emotionally? Are you prepared emotionally? Oh, yeah. I'm, like, ready to go. You I'm are. like, ready to see him. Even if when he gets here, things don't work the way that we've been talking about, like, pursuing a relationship, I'm still ready for that. OK. Um, you are? Yeah. You ready? I'm totally ready. You ready to get dumped? Sure. Why not? <laughs> we're not I, I wouldn't be ready to be well, dumped. We're not, we're not technically together. I don't think that Matt and I um, ever had a closure in our relationship. So I hope to find the where we are um, in our lives because we've been um, apart for about nine months. Okay, you're all up here. Okay, you're just like, la, 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 know everything, rationalize, understand, right? You're all up here. I gotta help you connect down to your heart. And that's why I keep asking you how you must feel. Well, it sucks to have to wait to get married. Because it's like, I am ready to marry Matt, but there's no logical way to do this. And it hurts that, um, it hurts, it sucks to fall in love when you're so young. And how does it feel to have him in and out of your life? It's frustrating to have him come in and out. And it's frustrating for me to want, um, to accept that, you know, to accept that. It's frustrating to just let myself do that. I'd want more. I do. It's, well, I either want more or closure. It's either got to be like more and have commitment or just closure and we're friends. Because there's just this middle part that we've been stuck in, like this limbo. Well, these are the things I wish for you. I want you to go and get your master's and PhD and I want you to go to college. And I want you to have love from a man that's a man, not a boy, that can be a partner, not a crutch. And that your heart is open. Tell me about the love you want. I want that kind of love too. Tell me about the tears. I don't think that's love 
She wants to wave goodbye to you till next time. Bye, Nelby. Bye, Flumpy. <laughs> and of course, she's not doing it for the mango. No. <laughs> Good girl, Smelly Flum. <laughs> All right, Nelly. All right, give me that. Good girl. I love animals so much. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so is this a possibility? Oh, it's such a possibility. I want to come back every day and hang out with them. <laughs> So tell me how this would support you. Um, tell me what these tears are. You know, they're choking you up. <laughs> it just makes me feel really good. It's something that I can do, and I could, like, help them, and they help me feel better. And it's like we're both here for each other, and it just feels really good. Yeah? Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. And is this the closest thing you've ever found to something that makes you feel this way? Or? Yeah, it's always... <laughs> I well, never, ever, ever thought I'd be able to stand next to an elephant and, and just hold her. <laughs> so on a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you want to do this? Oh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. <laughs> okay. Hey. Hey. How are you? Good. Are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. Okay. You had an assignment today. Yeah, that was rough. Yeah, talk to me. Tell me. Well, I couldn't get a hold of the friend mm -hmm. um, because she wasn't home, and I s did try several times. But I did get a hold of my mother and my father. Okay, so you have comments from mom and yes. dad. Yes. Okay. What did mom say? Well, the nicest thing I've ever done is share my kids with her. Share kids. Great. And my father said that I bought him a round of golf and a golf shirt at a country club. So okay. He, so so we'll he see. enjoyed that. What is the most hurtful thing I've ever done to you? To mom. She said when I was a teenager and I was acting out and being bad. Just being bad? Yeah, so when I was mom, a teenager. Mom has a leash on the being bad dog. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. What did dad say? That I don't send him gifts on his birthday or Christmas. Okay. I just said, thank you, but I wanted to say something to him, but I didn't. Good. My mom said that I'm colorful and the sweetness that I have. What did dad say? Well, this was tough. Okay. I thought the phone went dead mm -hmm. because there was a pause. Mm -hmm. And I thought I lost the connection. And then I heard crying. My father does not cry. Why did he cry? Because this was tough. Um, before he left, I was his little girl, and he said, I'm always going to... He said, you're always going to be my little girl. Tough. So, Why is that tough to hear that? Because it just feels like such a loss. You know, it's like it... I, I remember I only have one memory. He left at six, and I only have one memory before that age and that was him feeding me breakfast I guess he used to always feed me breakfast and we were really close I mean I remember the good the one good thing but it doesn't match up with what he's done since then but no matter what he did it went through the filter of him being a monster and leaving you you heard the words from his mouth today you'll always be my little girl can you receive it or would you rather be not. a victim of him leaving you? <laughs> hmm. In my heart of hearts, I really don't believe that Kim is open to hearing the truth. And she has set it up so she wouldn't hear it today either. Can you receive it? When he said it? Um... Yeah. 
Yeah. In order to have that place in your heart opened up, it means that you're going to have to lay down some of the stuff that you've told yourself about him. Yeah. Is it possible that the way you've seen your father and the things you've told yourself about your father were distorted? Maybe. That's possible. Okay. We'll just have it a possibility. Tell me three things you like about your oldest daughter. Oh. Three qualities. She's about a lot her. like you, by the way. Um, she's very spiritual. She's an old soul. Mm -hmm. And she's a very good listener. A good listener. Yes. That's all internal. Look and dress colorful coming from your mom. Your mom. <laughs> the first thing your mom says is, you look and dress colorful? I find it very interesting that although Kim says she has a good relationship with her mom, her mom offered her very little back about what makes that relationship good. Kim? Yeah. Is there an awareness here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's only, I mean, one thing. She she likes, I don't think it's, I, I see what you mean, that it's an external thing. You mean, yeah. From your mom. Mm hmm Your personality, so from dad, that's an overall good thing. You're a good mom, that's a doing, and his little girl, you know, that's, about him. I know. That's not about you. I know that. Got that, huh? Yes. So, so let me ask you a question. In doing this exercise, mm -hmm. did you communicate clear and clean how much this meant to you? Hmm. I guess not. These questions I have never asked him. So just asking it to me was a huge step. Yeah, absolutely. You know I what I mean? you for that. Yeah. For your mom and your dad. Right, because I've never, ever came to him in, in any kind of honesty like this. Here's my thinking. And I'm looking at the results, and what I have here, Kim, is a big incompletion. Right. So this assignment is incomplete. Right. And because I know that you have many little loose dogs running around in your brain, right. I'm going to give you the opportunity to complete redo. this assignment. Yes. Life gives you an endless <laughs> supply of redos yes, and do overs. Nice. So now, let's go for the truth. Okay. I want you to write them and okay. really share with them how much this exercise means to you and what you're going for. What are you going for? Joyful living. And in order to get there, you have to have what? Self-awareness. Okay. And then ask them to either write their response to you or call you with okay. a response. I have a hard time with criticism. Is it criticism or is it information that supports you in becoming self-aware? Kim is going to redo this exercise because it was incomplete and she was not available to hear the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Step by step. We're eating the elephant one bite at a time. It is an elephant. Yeah. It does stink. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Okay. Right now we just gnawing on the hoof. All right. Or the ear. Yeah. Okay. Did you want to come out here this weekend? Yeah, of course I do. Is it possible to come next weekend? Or since me and you, there's like not been a girl to compare, really. I'm beginning to realize that me calling him is almost out of desperation and loneliness because I know that he'll be the one that's always going to be there to support me. And I'm pretty much just scared. So with that realization, I don't really want him to come. I'm going to talk to Rhonda, and then I'll call you later. But I got to give the phone back to somebody else, OK? Yeah. I'll talk All to right. you later. There was just something about today that made me feel that I was gonna have like the best day ever. And I so had the best day ever. It was awesome. I'm like in love. I bet that was wonderful. Oh, mom, I was in love. I couldn't quit crying because I was so happy. If anything would make me not want to come home and to bring everything out here like you and everything, that's it. That's it right there. <laughs> I can, uh, I believe that. That's it. I mean, it was I beautiful. I, would, I think I would go a little nutty about that myself. 
When I first started this journey in the starting over house, nothing made sense to me and it definitely didn't seem like I had a purpose. More and more each day, I'm finding out that I have a purpose. It just makes me feel really good to know that um, I'm taking on these things in my life that I never even thought I could ever take on again. It's been a long time since I could actually say that I feel like I've been at home. And oh my gosh, I felt so at home there. It felt so good, Mom. It was amazing. Next on Starting Over, a surprise announcement. Today, you're going to get a new roommate. That sucks for me. Takes the house by storm. I'm really worried that it's going to be another f***ing psycho. Uh, I am too. And when the newest roommate finally arrives... How are you? I'm good. How are you? She immediately hits a raw nerve. I don't know. I think it's gonna be something. <laughs>